Good morning. I remembered uh, not to turn the microphone on in front of that speaker over there because I don't think that speaker likes it. But we're glad you're here for the second Sunday of Advent. And uh, I want to thank, I, I don't even know who it was, but someone made an anonymous donation for a hundred poncetas. And I think the plan is like after... Is it Christmas Eve or the day after Christmas? Always, you can figure that out. You can take one with you or take it to the Height House, not the Height House, the Met House. I pastored a church that had a Height House, so sometimes my brain gets jumbled up there. Um, or take it to a shut in, whatever. We have a lot of them, so that's great. And I want to thank John Hanshu. So um, he brought in a big box of multiple little boxes of mass so we're good for mass for ever probably hopefully we won't need them forever 
Okay, so uh, glad you're here, and uh, let's uh, look at our announcements before we get into our worship. As you can see, uh, communion today, and Neil or Darlene, and or both of them will lead you to the altar, uh, kind of filter you up here. You can kneel there if there's room, but you may have more room this way, and then if everyone could go out this way, either go down the aisle inside the church, or you can go back down the hallway uh, outside. Let's look at our announcements. There will be no Tuesday in the Word Bible study this week. And prayers for Judy. Uh, if you want to send her a card, her address is in the directory. And Parkview Tires Cookbooks will be for sale after the worship service next Sunday. Uh, Victoria asked if she could sell them for their activity group. And since it is a nonprofit, uh, Generally, if someone wanted to just sell stuff, you really can't do that in the church because we're a nonprofit and it jeopardizes our tax status. Um, but like if someone wanted to do like even like a Tupperware sale or something, every once in a while we get requests for someone doing sales. So you can't do it unless it goes to a nonprofit. Like the Scouts, for example, will do all kinds of fundraisers, but it's going to the Scouts who are, are an arm of the church and uh, you know anything that goes to the church is okay. So that's sort of the difference there. It has to go to a nonprofit. Uh, this is the second Sunday of Advent. As I said, it's uh, the peace theme. Someone was asking me, well, what are the Sundays of Advent? And the best way I can explain it, it's like Thanksgiving dinner. Even though you have certain things, it's not always exact. Like some people do something a little bit different. You know, you could have cranberries that are sliced from the can or you get a fresh cranberries or you know you can kind of move things around a little bit so it's not like set in stone um, but generally it's hope peace joy love um, again a special cluster charge conference uh, if you are eligible to vote in that you I would have sent you probably a too much information uh, regarding that but um, there is a vote coming up, and uh, so it has to be before the bankruptcy judge, and the deadline is the 15th. It's a very convoluted process. I had a lot of, Ray and I talked about a half hour last night about uh, this uh, plan, but uh, it's actually, for me, it's a little fascinating because I love legal stuff. Um, there's like $1.9 billion in the settlement fund. I was asking Ray where all this money was coming from. Uh, 250 million came from the Church of Latter-day Saints. Uh, a lot of it's coming from the, count, the local councils, and unfortunately, they are emptying their endowments to fund this. So it's uh, something, as I said last week, we don't want to stress about, but at the same time, we are linked to the Boy Scouts, right? It's a charter organization. So what happens in this bankruptcy is important, but then again, I don't know. I always believe that the Lord has a plan is in charge of all things. So the most simple thing we have to do is vote up or down on the bankruptcy plan. The United Methodist Church is advising a no vote because the plan that is currently in effect is legally exposing the local churches and not leaving us uh, adequately covered. So just went to pass that along. Uh, and you'll get more information on the Tuesday meeting at the superintendent's office. Saturday, homeless lunch prep. And what I was just wondering, uh, I didn't see any bags of grace this year. We didn't do that? Oh, they're going out? Okay, I didn't see a collection. Okay, good. So when did you collect the bags of grace, the items? Did you already have a stockpile? Good, okay. Okay, sound, sounds great. Okay, upcoming events. Um, homeless lunch delivery on Sunday. I'm glad that you were able to get somebody. Um, and if you ever really get stuck, don't forget that where you're delivering to, I could always take it after church on Sunday if need be. So just wanted to give you that option. On Tuesday, uh, 1214, women in the Bible, the widow of 
Zeropath. Did I say that right? Okay. And uh, we'll continue our Bible study on how to read the Bible for all it's worth on the 16th. Uh, and then it's hard to believe that Christmas is just about two and a half weeks out, something like that, right? We're in the second Sunday of Advent. We will have one Christmas Eve candlelight service. It will be at 7 p.m. It won't be at, I forget what happened last year, between COVID and a storm. It was kind of like a mess, but it turned out nice anyway, which was always a good thing. But it will be at 7 p.m., and uh, as long as Kathy's able to do it, it we'll get it up on Facebook uh, live and also record it to YouTube, and it's also recorded to Facebook after also. Okay, I gave a lot of stuff to you today. Do we have any other announcements? Let's start our worship. Uh, let's uh, open with prayer, and then we'll go to our call to worship. Holy source of life and hope, as we come together this day, open our ears to hear, open our eyes to see, and open our hearts to love, that we may come to know your ways and follow your paths as we prepare for the coming of the one who calls us to turn from our false gods to you, Holy One, the true source of salvation. As we celebrate your son's birth in the cradle, let us not forget his death on the cross for our sin. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Join us as we uh, start off our worship.
let there be peace on earth and let begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with God as a father brothers all are we let me walk with my brother in perfect harmony let peace begin with me and this be my home and now with every step i take let this be my solemn vow take each moment on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with God as my father brothers all are we let me walk with my brother So you have something for the kids? Yes. Okay, so uh, any children, if you want to come forward, we're going to light the candles. Nolan, is that? Yeah, that's Nolan. And you, want, you can bring your sister too, Charlie. Grace, is, your, is that your grandson? Does he want to come up? No? He might go get bored because we're going to have an activity to do. It's going to be a lot more fun than sitting there. Ah, we convinced him. What's your name? What's your name? Max? Okay. Okay. So what we want to do today is, I should probably set a good example. Okay. So what we want to do today is light the candles. So I need, uh, Charlie, do you guys want to light the candle for us? Not you, Charlie, these Max and Nolan. Do you want to light the candle? Okay. Well, okay. You're going to be, you're going to go shy on me? Okay. Okay, you guys come up, Max. And uh, so what we want to do, I have a reading to do, and then we light two candles on, this is called the Advent read, right? And that really what it does is it, count down, it counts down towards Christmas. So uh, the closer we get to Christmas, the more candles are lit. So tonight, today we're going to light two. That means we have two more than we light this one on Christmas Eve. Okay. Are you visiting, Max? Sorry. Okay. Okay. One of the hallmarks of the Christmas story is when the angels appear to the shepherds and they proclaim peace on earth. Jesus brought about peace in the most unexpected ways when he arrived. 
Some people wanted a rebellion. They wanted their savior to overturn the oppressive rule of the Romans and bring about peace in a violent way. But Jesus had something else in mind. First, he gives us inner peace. Because of his work on the cross, we have a chance to receive salvation and be indwelled by the Holy Spirit. This grants us an inner peace. Not only do we have the peace that comes from the assurance of salvation, but we also have the peace of mind knowing God will heal this broken world and will come again. Second, we have peace with others. We put aside our differences, especially with other believers, because we belong to the same family. We have the same purpose, to let others know about the peace of Christ. The Hebrew word for peace, shalom, goes far beyond not fighting with others or peace as we know it. As in shalom is in essence how things are meant to be, it is a slice of heaven. The peace of God allows us to look at others through heaven's eyes and help guide the world to see God's here and not yet here kingdom. Peace from God, biblical peace, allows us to trust in the promises of God through restful, tranquil faith, despite the dark, scary world around us. Now we're gonna light the candles of hope and peace. We're not gonna use that one. Just put that, we'll just put that there. We're gonna be more eloquent, right? We're gonna do it the right way. These are acolyte sticks or lighters, whatever. So uh, so you wanna do the first one, Charlie? You can light one of the purple ones. Whoops, you got my microphone thing there. <laughs> so you can light one of those. Max, you can light the one of the other purple ones. You got it. Good job. Okay, so how do we, do we blow this out? What do we do? We just pull this lever right, see? Pull the lever down and it goes out. So thanks guys, you did a great job. So uh, Miss Alice has something for you to do. There's the activity, maybe you, if you have time they can do the activity sheets or whatever project that you have. So as the kids are getting settled in, uh, let's go ahead and get ready to worship God today with the presentation of our tithes and our offerings. Do you guys want a lollipop? You want a lollipop, little one?
Father God, we come before you this day. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to prepare our hearts as we become ever closer to the Christmas day, Lord, and the celebration of your son. Lord, as we uh, stand here today, we are in awe of you because you are an awesome God who inspires us. We give to you not because we are worthy, because you are the one who is worthy to worship. Lord, we pray that you would bless us as we give of all that we are, Lord, for the purposes of building your kingdom. And we pray, Lord, that in spite of our fallenness and brokenness, Lord, that we, are, we cannot be saved by ourselves, but we are saved through the loving act of your son on the cross. We give you praise and thanks for that as we present ourselves before you. In the name of Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen. You may be seated as we remain in an attitude of prayer. A couple prayer. Uh, Glenda texted me a couple times uh, about updates about this young boy by name of Ryan Cook that uh, had a tr bone marrow transplant. He's still in the hospital. And so we're asking just for continued prayers and pray that that uh, transplant uh, takes. Um, Gene, is, is Ryan, is he like a neighbor of yours or how, what is your connection to him? A neighbor, a neighbor okay. So that's, uh, we've been, he, he's been on our prayer list before, so let's continue to uh, pray for him and his family as they're asking for continued prayers. Also, I had a situation that I never experienced before in my ministry this past week. I had a funeral, um, but not one person was there. Uh, she paid for everything, and John, you know, up at Greens, uh, you know, we, I said, well, I'm going to do the funeral. Uh, I'm going to do it anyway, and uh, she didn't have many uh, persons around. There was uh, a gentleman by the name of Steve, I uh, can't remember his last name, Avertis, something like that. Uh, he runs a pizza shop in Whitaker, and he... She, this lady came, his, her name's Patricia, I won't say her last name. She came and said, do you know someone who can help me? And he said, well, I can do it. And he basically, you know, got her mail and helped her with some things. Um, but he only knew her for six months. And then he was going to go, and he ended up with uh, being isolated because he, he was tested and uh, positive for COVID. So um, it was just me and... Uh, John there and we did the funeral so I was thinking like I don't want that to happen again so I was hoping that I could maybe if that ever situation ever arises again that I could contact some of you or send out a mass email just so we have a few people show up I don't think anyone should have their sending off to be with the Lord with nobody there so if you would have an extra 20 minutes or something like that if that situation should ever arise again. Uh, I never had it before. I had a funeral once with uh, uh, the, a lady who passed and the son was there or, and uh, a friend of the son or something, like two people, but I never had a zero funeral. So uh, I don't know. It just kind of bothers me. I guess that's not really a prayer request. I guess a prayer that that shouldn't happen. But um, I just wanted to lift that up for, for you today. We'll open up for any other prayer requests that you would like to uh, share today. Um, Ron has something, and then I see uh, Carol up here too. So go ahead, Ron, you got the mic, you're on. I'd like to pray for a friend of mine, Joel Jenkins, who has COVID. Okay, we'll continue to pray for Joel and all the people of COVID. My wife works, as you know, Passman Hospital. She said the first time this week, they were actually had overwhelmed by COVID people coming in, even going back to the early days. Now, I don't think the symptoms are severe. They're not like a lot of severe cases, but uh, again, it's probably something you want to be careful with. That's all. Uh, yes, uh, Carol. I'm asking continued prayers for my friend Sandy. Uh, she's going to have open heart surgery on December 8th. She's at Cleveland Clinic, but there's been a lot of complications, so she needs a lot of prayer. Yeah, you brought her up last week, so we're asking continued prayers for Sandy's going to have uh, heart micro, surgery yeah, at the Cleveland. Have a mitral valve replaced for her heart. Mitral valve replacement. So we want to keep her in uh, in our prayers um, as she goes through this on December eighth. Thank you. 
Thank you, Carol. Uh, Judy. Okay, this is a weird praise, but that's my, all right. We'll take any kind of praise, even weird ones. They're good. Only my family. My father-in-law is going to be 93 December 19th, and we get a call from Locust Grove. He was rushed to the hospital with heart attack symptoms. So, okay, one of us could only go up, so my husband went up, and they did the heart enzymes and everything. It came out good. Here, he exercises, and he over-exercised. Okay. <laughs> so it's not as hard. It was exercising. So it's a praise. <laughs> good. Praise God for that. Yeah. A co-worker named Kathy was diagnosed with cancer. Okay. And uh, she's in recovery. Prayers for her healing, please. Friend, we'll keep uh, Kathy in our prayers, diagnosed with uh, cancer. Thank, thank you. Any others? Uh, Ron. Uh, my sister-in-law, uh, Mickey, lives in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, she has COVID. She's on day six. Her uh, fever just broke, and the, the plus side is uh, her blood oxygen is still good. Prayers for Ron's sister-in-law, Mickey, in Texas, uh, has COVID and is in uh, quarantine, I guess, uh, waiting to uh, recover from, from it. Any, any others uh, today? I have a pastor. Short one. Um, there was a, uh, uh, a pastor, Mel Heilman, who uh, I worked with for a long time in Charleroi. And I got news, actually, like right as we were starting the service, that he died last night. Um, okay. And... Uh, he touched a lot of people in the uh, Charleroi and Manesson areas, so be praying for them and for the Mel Heilman family, for the Heilman family. So. Okay, we'll add that to our ongoing list. Any others uh, today? I have a praise. I want to thank Alice for stepping up and wearing another hat and helping with the kids. So, Anything else? Okay, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you. We've heard a lot uh, mentioned here today, uh, people who have passed away and uh, facing surgeries and cancer and dealing with COVID, Lord, and uh, uh, young boys dealing with uh, leukemia and uh, a lot going on, Lord. And we lift all of these persons before you, Lord. And we'd like to add... All those that were not specifically mentioned here today, we pray pray for them. We pray for those who are who are uh, shut in or in, in care facilities, Lord, especially at this time because many of them are still closed on and uh, as far as visitation goes. And Lord, we uh, know that that is a hard thing for both the families and uh, the persons in those facilities, Lord. So, Lord, we know that uh, no matter what happens, uh, you will be with us, Lord. And also, while we've talked about it uh, from, uh, I guess, a legal perspective, uh, we'd like to lift up the whole uh, Boy Scout issue, Lord, that is uh, uh, vexing us right now. And uh, we, we lift all of these things before you. And uh, we know that uh, you are always with us and we don't have to uh, be overly... Uh, panicked or anything like that about anything because we know that you walk with us through this life and so we give you uh, praise and thanks that you not only walk through us through this life you give us eternal life and what more could we ask for and help us Lord to find joy in that so we lift all these things before you and we remember the prayer that you uh, lifted up and taught to your disciples that we lift up this day as our prayer the Lord's Prayer our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
but the bells on Christmas Day their old familiar carols play and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth goodwill to man And the bells are ringing Like a choir that's singing In my heart I hear them All of goodwill to man And in despair I bow my ear There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the soul. Of peace on earth, goodwill to man. And the bells are ringing. Like a choir singing. Does anybody hear them? Hold on, goodwill to man. Then ring the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he. shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to bell. And ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime. Peace on earth, goodwill to man, and the bells are ringing, like a choir they're singing, in our hearts we'll hear them. Amen. So uh, I'd like to share with you a little bit before we uh, share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And uh, the scripture I'm going to use, it's something that you may associate more with uh, Holy Week. Um, it talks about how Jesus, who is the, uh, 
how he grew up like a tender shoot and a root out of dry land, but he had no mute beauty or majesty to him, and how he was horribly uh, afflicted for our sakes. And what I want to get across today is that when we look at Christmas, it should never be in isolation from the cross, right? So the cradle, the manger connects to the cross. So let's go ahead and look at this uh, scripture again from Isaiah. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our inequities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. Uh, this is the word of God for we who are the people of God. Let's pray. Gracious God, during this time of message, and as we move into the sacrament of Holy Communion, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be with us as we pray in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Many years ago, back in the early 90s, uh, when I, I was a seminary intern at um, Passivan Community, retirement community up in, not, it's not part of the hospital, but it's a retirement community up in Zillianople. And it's a Lutheran-run facility, and they were, I worked there with uh, two full-time Lutheran chapters, and then there were different part-time uh, persons there. And we did like four services a Sunday, and they actually had a full church there built into their campus, a full-fledged Lutheran church. Um, I always like to say, I went to a Presbyterian seminary, I did my internship in a Lutheran church, and I'm a Methodist, so I'm pretty uh, <laughs> widespread there. But one re re retired pastor who lived in that community, he, he did occasional things, but he was, he was 100 years old, and this is going back to the early 90s. And he was German, he was originally, you know, lived in Germany, and I love to talk, to visit and talk with him because he was like a living history book. And you know, if you know anything about me, you know that I love history. And he would tell these stories of things that happened in Germany pre-World War I. You know, that's like the early 1900s, and he talked about the Kaiser and, you know, and how the regalia of their military with the, this is not World War II, in World War I they had the, the pointy type, uh, you know, hat, uh, helmet things, and just he had all these stories about Berlin and everything in the early 1900s, and I was always fascinated uh, by the conversations that, that we had. But one thing that drove him crazy, and are pretty set in what they do. I remember I was at uh, a church and we had an ecumenical Lutheran service in a, a different location. And I said something that wasn't in the bolt and I paraphrased something and everyone just looked at me like, you cannot say anything that's not written down. <laughs> and uh, because they follow, they never preach. If it's not a gospel, they always have the sermon based upon the gospel, never the Old Testament or Paul's letters or anything like that. You read them, but you don't preach on them. Um, so he just hated the idea of having communion on Christmas Eve, even though Lutherans always do that. I've gone both ways, um, but he hated that because he didn't want to think about sacrificing, like the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus while Jesus was just little baby Jesus in the manger, right? So he just didn't like that connection. However, I respectfully would disagree because I think that we can't put a firewall between Jesus in the manger and Jesus on the cross because they were the one and the same person. Jesus was born for one purpose as part of God's plan to ultimately shed his blood 
and give up his body on the cross for our sakes and for our inequities, our sins. So during this Advent Christmas season, we can often get caught up in the wonderment of Jesus' birth. You know, the carols, the Christmas trees, the, the plays, and all of this is important. And everything from the angels' announcements to Mary and Joseph to Simeon, the Holy, inspire, Holy Spirit-inspired prophecy of the identity of the Messiah. Remember uh, Simeon? It's a Christmas story we often don't think of very much, but when Jesus went up to the temple for circumcision and dedication when he was eight days old, Simeon, this old prophet, was sitting there waiting for Jesus to come and appear. And we have, of course, the angelic choir singing praise at his birth and all these Christmassy things. But one thing we must do is to not sweep away, uh, not be swept away, I guess is a better way of saying this, in all the wonderment of his birth and leave this wonderment untethered to the cross. The biblical cross here is not focused on the cradle or the manger, but rather it is on the cross. Some 30 years after the cradle, this holy child took upon himself all the hatred and sin of humankind. Jesus was the abused and hated child of the manger. Humans disdain for his God ruled the day. So as the Son of Man was discarded in hatred, the baby of the manger was murdered and charged like a common criminal. And that's what this scripture from Isaiah says to us today. Right? This same Jesus, the same flesh and blood that was in that baby when God came to earth in the incarnation is the very same flesh and blood that was broken and shed on the cross. And the reason the cross is the focus is because of what was done when the baby lay in the manger, when he becomes a man who could give himself as a sacrifice. And what can be so sad is that year after year, multitudes of people, even people who are regular people in our churches, you can get caught up, I can get caught up, in all the wonderment of the cradle and the Christmas story, but never connect the dots from the cradle to the cross. So the cradle and the cross are linked together, right? There would, if there wasn't ever going to be a cross, there would have never been a cradle because God sent his son to go to the cross and to shed his blood and have his body broken for our sakes. And that's what we remember at Holy Communion, right? When I hand you the bread, I said, this is the bread of life, or this is the body of Christ that what? That has been broken for you. And this is the blood, the cup is, this is the blood of Jesus that has been shed for you. And um, so it's the same, it's the same person, right? It's, it's not, and I, I, I really feel that so often, you know, last week I mentioned that uh, Christmas becomes like an invasive species onto Advent. Because Chris, what I mean by that, what does an invasive species does? It just takes over everything, right? Um, it's kind of like what's happening in, in Florida as the Burmese pythons, people have let them go as pets. And uh, probably because they bought them as pets and they got a lot bigger than they ever expected, they can get you know, 16, 20 feet long. And so people let them go, and they just became the apex predator in the Everglades. There are no foxes, there are no raccoons, there are no deer anymore in the Everglades because the pythons uh, have ate them, <laughs> ate them all, you know, they have, and they're a real threat there. And that's the way all invasive species are. So what happens is sometimes Christmas takes over, the wonderment Christmas takes over other things. It takes over Advent. It takes over... Uh, the, the concept that, as this uh, retired older pastor, uh, didn't like the idea of the shed blood of baby Jesus. But it is one and the same person, right? The, the Christmas did not happen in a vacuum, that the birth of Jesus 
God sent his son for one purpose, right? To go to the cross and to die on the cross for our sins. So um, I say to you, what about you and I? Are we making the connection from the cradle to the cross as we celebrate this Advent Christmas season? Because there is that, that always that connection. We can't take it away. And we should be grateful for the magnificent of the Christmas story, but we should be even more grateful that he died to take away our sin. That wasn't done in the manger. Where was it done? On the cross. And the truth is that an old rugged cross will never have the appeal of an old rugged manger. And many will embrace the joy of the birth, but unless there is a true embracing of what happened on the cross, then Christmas joy simply will be fleeting at best. Right? Because Jesus cannot stay in the manger. What's that, um, maybe Ron can help me, what's that movie out there about the, the, nat the race driver? No one's going to. Talladega Nights, I think, right? And the, the character there, he always prays. for he, Yeah, he only wants to pray to baby Jesus, right? And it really is, that's a really good theological point there because he, he doesn't want to pray to grown-up Jesus. He just likes the baby Jesus. And that's what I'm saying. Don't be like that. Don't be that guy, right? Because baby Jesus, is his plan is to grow up and to become the man, Jesus, who makes the choice. Remember what he said on the cross, not my, not my will, but your will, Father God. And so it's the same thing. So as we get caught up in the Christmas season, remember the purpose of it, and let's not leave it disconnected to the cross. And that's an important part of why Jesus came and why we have a Christmas in the first place. So let's prepare our hearts to celebrate Holy Communion. I think hand sanitizer is the new holy water. <laughs> put, it, put it on the, wall, uh, the uh, altar. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. All who come to me shall not hunger, and all who believe in me shall not thirst. With Christians around the world and throughout the centuries, we likewise gather for this Advent Holy Communion. We gather around these symbols of bread and wine. They are simple elements that speak of nourishment and transformation. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are as close to us as breath that your love is constant and unfailing. We thank you for all that sustains life, and especially for Jesus Christ, who teaches us how to live out an ethic of justice and peace, and for the promise of transformation made manifest in his birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. We ask you to bless this bread and this cup. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, that we may join with you in promoting the well-being of all creation. Amen. We remember on the night when Jesus and the disciples had their last meal together, Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. As often as you do, remember me. In the symbol of the broken bread, we participate in the life of Christ 
and we dedicate ourselves to being his disciples. In the same way, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant that is poured out for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In the symbol of the cup, we participate in the new life that Christ brings. I invite you to the Lord's table and uh, you can find a space up here if you want to kneel at the altar. And then again, if you could head out that way um, when, after you spend time at the altar and receive the bread and the cup.
Let us pray. We give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at your altar. We pray that you would strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, as we have been fed by the seed that became grain and then became bread. May we go out into the world to plant seeds of justice, transformation, and hope. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Do please rise and join us as we sing the old one in the cross. we go forth and take the peace and the hope of Jesus as we continue to prepare ourselves for his coming. Go in his name, go in the Father's name, and go in the name of God who is the Holy Spirit. Amen.